Welcome back everyone. It is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here today with another educational cryptocurrency tutorial. And today we're going to be going over the complete beginner's guide to Coinbase Pro. So Coinbase Pro is an extension to the regular Coinbase website, but with better access to trading charts as well as better trading fees. So the regular Coinbase did recently add the advanced trade feature where you can pull up candlestick charts, see the order book, put in limit orders and that sort of thing. But again, still Coinbase Pro has better trading fees. So if you plan to be trading with Coinbase, you're definitely going to want to be using Coinbase Pro over Coinbase and save yourself some money on the fees. If you already have a Coinbase account set up, you're not going to need to set up a Coinbase Pro account. It is going to be under the same email and password login. So if you haven't set up a regular Coinbase account already, you're going to want to go to the video on our channel and watch how to set up a regular Coinbase account. Also, if you sign up using the link in the description below, the first time you purchase or sell $100 worth of cryptocurrency, you're going to get a free $10 in Bitcoin. And so are we. It helps you out and it also helps us out so we can keep making these educational videos for you guys. So make sure to get your Coinbase account set up. And then what you're going to want to do is go to pro.coinbase.com. And that is the URL for Coinbase Pro. Alrighty, and then you're gonna to wanna to sign in. And again, you're gonna use your regular Coinbase sign in. And since I was already signed in on Coinbase, it went ahead and automatically logged me in to Coinbase Pro. And so now it says USD deposits are now instant. So this is gonna be your main interface for Coinbase Pro here. So again, you've got your basic candlestick chart, order book, and we're gonna go over all of that. But first, what we're gonna to need to do, if we're gonna to wanna to do any sort of trading, we're gonna to need to transfer some funds to our account. Even though Coinbase Pro uses the same login as your Coinbase account, you're still gonna to have to transfer the funds from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro. So I'm on Coinbase Pro and immediately what it's gonna do is pop up and say transfer funds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit that, hit transfer funds. But if you don't see that pop up, you're gonna hit this portfolio page and then you're gonna hit the deposit button and then it's gonna pull up a list of coins and you're gonna to wanna to select the coin that you are going to be transferring from Coinbase. So if you had USD, you would click that. But in this case, I've got uh, $56 worth of Bitcoin sitting in my Coinbase account. So I'm gonna transfer that here by selecting Bitcoin. And then it's gonna give you two options. You can import it from a crypto address. This would be if you were sending it from another wallet or here, this is the option to transfer it directly from coinbase.com. So I'm gonna hit that and now it shows my coin Coinbase account. Now it's going into my Coinbase Pro account and I'm going to transfer the max amount of Bitcoin possible, which happens to be here. And it's going to tell me the fee, no fee. It's a free transfer to transfer from Coinbase to Coinbase Pro and the processing time is instant. So I'm going to go ahead and hit deposit and boom, your deposit is complete. So now if I refresh the page, there we go. I should be able to see my Bitcoin balance here in Coinbase Pro. So this is on my portfolios page where you'll be able to manage your balances as well as your deposits and your withdrawal history. So I'm gonna go back to the main trade page now here. And so now we're gonna talk a little bit about all this stuff we're seeing here on this main page. So the first thing you're gonna see is here, which is your candlestick chart. Now we have some videos on our channel where we explain in detail about these candlestick charts, but we're gonna just go over it briefly. So each one of these candlesticks, each one of these little lines that they're calling them is representing a period in time. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change the candlestick. We're going to start from the top. We're going to change it to the one day perspective. Now, what this means is each one of these candlesticks, this red one here, this red one here, and then this green one here, each one of those represents one day in time. Red candles represent days where it opened and then closed lower than the open price. Green candles represent days where it opened and then closed higher than the open price. So let's take this, let's take this red candle, for example, right here. On this day, at the start of the daily candle, wherever that is, and you'll have to look into your time zone to see when your candles start. In my case, every Sunday night at 6 p.m. is when we start our new weekly candle, but it's gonna be different depending on what time zone you're in. Anyways, the top thick part of this candle here represents the opening price on that day. At the start of this day, Bitcoin was about $63,500. During that 24 hour period, it dropped all the way down to here and it didn't finish the day at this price, but it dipped all the way down to 58,000 and then it came back up and finished the day right there at 60,000. So this thin line is what they call a wick, which shows where it went, but it didn't quite close there. So during this day, it opened here, went all the way down, and then it closed at this point. So this shows you the daily 24 hour movement. It went all the way down and closed there. Now, if we take one of these green candles, for example, it works in the exact opposite direction. So this candle, for example, the day started right here, right about 54,800. It might have at the beginning of the day dipped down a little bit and had this little bit of a wick and then climbed back up. It looks like it has a little tiny wick on top and then finished closing right there at the thick part again. 
Now, like we were saying earlier, you can actually adjust the time perspective of each one of these candles. So we can go from the daily to the six hour and get a little bit more information on what is actually happening in the micro perspective in the price action. So now we can see that each one of these candles represents six hours in time versus one day. So four candles together would equal a 24 hour period. You can go even smaller down to the one hour and we're gonna be able to see more and more price action. And this is where advanced charting techniques with support, resistance, wedges, and that sort of thing comes into play, which we will make videos on later. Um, but you can go all the way down to the one minute candlestick chart where literally each one of these candles represents represents one minute in time. And same concepts apply. Red candles are the bear candles, they call them. Going down, green candles would be bullish. Going up, and that's sort of the basics of your candlestick chart. And again, here you can change it to the line chart where you don't see the candlesticks. But again, I like to use the candlestick chart because you get a lot more information on the actual movement of the price action of the coins. So um, here you can also add in some overlays. The only indicators they have on Coinbase Pro are estimated moving averages. So you can put on your 12 day estimated moving average. Well, in this case, it would be whatever candlestick perspective you're on. So this would be the 12 minute moving average. If I go to the day chart, now it would be the 12 day moving average. If I go to the day chart, now it would be the 12 day moving average. So down here we have a depth chart. I don't really look at this too often. Some people like to use it, but it's basically a chart showing the amount of buys and sells at what price. So you can see here along the bottom as the price becomes lower, um, more and more people are looking to buy Bitcoin. And as the price gets higher, more and more people are looking to sell Bitcoin. And you can directly see this translation here on the order book chart. So over here on the left, this is called the order book. So these green ones are gonna be your buy orders. The red ones are gonna be your sell orders or your bid and ask orders. And then they're, they're also gonna show you your spread here, which is the difference from the closest sell order and the closest buy order. So most of the time it's gonna be pretty low because that's what price action is. It's the fight for equilibrium in the market. People are trying to buy and sell and find a price that everyone agrees on for Bitcoin. So down here, you can scroll down and see that the price gets lower and lower. So right now, at time of speaking, the current price of Bitcoin is about 37,845. But as you scroll down, you can see people have buys here for 37,800. And then there's sells here up for higher numbers as well. And then over here on the right, you can see the actual trade history here. So you can see the amount of Bitcoin someone purchased, the price they purchased for, as well as the time they purchased it. So over here on the left, the trade size, that's referring to the amount of Bitcoin they purchased. If it's a green one, that means they bought. If it's red, that means they sold. So let me see if I can highlight some here. Right here, you can see that someone bought 0 0.0253 Bitcoin at 37,850. And this is a live chart, so you can always see the orders that are going through. Now we need to talk about how to to actually place your own order. So right now we're on Bitcoin versus US dollar. And so here is where you're able to select your market. And what this means, these are gonna be your trading pairs. So the most common one here is gonna be Bitcoin versus US dollar. And what this would mean, would mean that you're purchasing Bitcoin with US dollars. The first ticker listed is the coin that you're purchasing. And the second ticker listed is the one you are purchasing it with. So again, in this case, you would be purchasing Ethereum with US dollars. In this case, you'd be purchasing ADA with US dollars. Now, if I go back to my portfolio page, I don't have US dollars in my account. I have Bitcoin in my account because that's what I transferred from Coinbase. So I need to go back to my trade page, select market, and I need to be trading against Bitcoin here. So now I can see that all of the second tickers are Bitcoin because that is the coin I'm gonna be using to purchase other coins. So if I wanted to buy some ADA, for example, with my Bitcoin, I would click on ADA versus Bitcoin here. Boom, and that's gonna bring me to the ADA versus Bitcoin chart. And again, I've got the same sort of candlestick chart that I had on Bitcoin. And I can actually see here on the daily chart that ADA has been at quite a low for a while. It's been kind of holding down here and hasn't had a whole lot of action. Not a bad buying point, but uh, we're gonna do a lot of videos in the future telling you guys how to identify those sort of points. Um, but I need to buy ADA. Right here, I can see the amount of Bitcoin I have, and right here, I can see the amount of ADA I have. Now, you can either buy or sell. Right now, I'm gonna be buying. On Coinbase Pro, there are three types of orders. There's a market order, a limit order, and a stop limit order. So the first one we're gonna be going over is the market order. Now, what a market order is, is you're gonna put in the amount of Bitcoin that you wanna spend, and when you hit place buy order, it's gonna go and spend that amount of Bitcoin and find you the best possible deal on the market at the moment. So if I wanted to buy Bitcoin and let's say I wanted to buy, you know, I have 0.001 Bitcoin in here. So let's say I wanted to do 
0.0005. Let's say I wanted to buy half, I spent half my Bitcoin to buy ADA. That's gonna give me about 18 ADA coins here. And what I meant by it's gonna give you the best possible deal on the market. So if I said I wanna spend 0.0005 Bitcoin to buy 18 ADA and I'm doing a market order, it's just gonna give me the best deal available on the order book at the moment. So we can see there's 2,800 well, they, someone just bought it. There's 4,100 ADA coins available for sale at the price of 0 0.00002783 Bitcoin. So when I place my buy order, it's going to take a chunk out of that. You can see my trade history went through. And then here you can see my order that went through. You can see the filled order here. And I got 17.87 ADA. Now, if I go back to my portfolios page, I can see that I have $37 worth of Bitcoin as well as $18 worth of ADA. So let's go ahead and do that one more time, but I'll show you guys how to use a limit order. So let's go to a different coin. Um, let's say I want to buy, let's say I want to buy some engine coin. So I'm going to click on ENJ here, engine but this time I'm gonna to wanna to do a limit order. So the difference between a market and limit order, the market order is just gonna give you whatever the best deal on the market is for however much you selected to buy. Now the limit order is a little bit different where you have to put in something called the limit, which is basically a price that you're saying is the limit, which is gonna be the max or minimum you're willing to buy or sell for. So let me break that down a little bit. I'm actually gonna to go to Bitcoin because it's gonna be a little bit easier to explain on a Bitcoin versus US dollar chart. All right, so what I did is I took a screenshot of the Bitcoin versus US dollar order book so it's not moving so fast so we can actually look at what's going on here. So when you place a limit order, let's say I was buying, I'm gonna have to put in a limit that says this is the maximum price I'm willing to pay for Bitcoin. So if I wanted to buy one Bitcoin, one whole Bitcoin, and I put my limit price at 37,911.59 and I hit buy, it's not gonna fill my entire order. The reason for that is I put this price as the max I'm willing to pay, but there's only 0.67 Bitcoin for sale at that price before it gets more expensive. So I wanted to buy one whole Bitcoin and I hit buy. It's gonna buy all of this here at the bottom, so that order won't be there anymore but it's not gonna it's not gonna buy this next order because this price is higher than the limit order i selected so it's gonna leave 0.4 bitcoin basically unfilled so let's say for example i wanted to buy 10 bitcoin and i said you know what the current price is 37,913. The most I'm willing to pay for Bitcoin is 38,000. Now, if I set my limit order up like that, there's a good chance that my entire limit's gonna be filled because I can't even see 38,000 here on this ask chart. So if I was trying to buy 10 Bitcoin, it's gonna buy up all of these all the way up until it hits 38,000. And if there's not more than 10 Bitcoin for sale below $38,000, then my entire order won't fill. However, if there is, it'll fill it all the way up and buy up to 10 whole Bitcoin. I know that's a little bit confusing, which is why some people use market orders, but it's a little bit safer to actually use a limit order because you can control the price you actually want to buy at. So let's go back to a coin. Um, let's say I want to buy some Dogecoin. So the current price of Doge is 0.000037, right? So I need to put my limit price in. And here I've got my order book and I can see there's a ton of Dogecoin for sale at the 0038 mark. So I can go 0 0.000038 as my limit. Now, if I wanted to make sure I got my whole order filled, I could put it up one point higher and that's gonna be okay. And let's say I wanna buy the maximum amount of Doge that I have with all of the Bitcoin I have left. So boom, I put in the amount of Doge that I want to buy and I put in my limit price, which is the highest I'm willing to pay for it. You can also put in good till canceled, immediate or cancel. This is basically if, you're, if your order doesn't fill immediately, it'll cancel. Um, and we'll go over some of those in some future videos. It's gonna tell you your fee and the total transaction value and hit place by order. Hit place order. And then if I go back to my portfolios page once again, now I can see I've got all three of those coins in here. Now limit order also works on the way down if you were trying to sell some coins. So let's go back to Bitcoin versus US dollar. And let's say I was looking to sell Bitcoin, right? And if I wanted to sell Bitcoin, the current price is about 37,890. And so if I put my limit and said, you know what? The bottom, the absolute bottom I'm willing to sell my Bitcoin for is 37,000, let's say 37,900. Obviously that's higher than the current price right now. So if I was trying to sell Bitcoin, there's no one willing to pay 
that price right now for Bitcoin. So if I went to try to sell my Bitcoin with my limit at 37,900, my order is not going to go through until that price gets back up to 37,900 and there's people looking to buy at that price. So if I wanted to immediately sell some Bitcoin right now, I'd have to say, okay, uh, the price is about 37,855. So I could say, you know what, the least I'm willing to sell my Bitcoin for is 37,750. I'll give myself a hundred dollar slip there. And the nice part about limit orders is it's always going to give you the best order possible um, first. If I went to sell my Bitcoin at 37,750 and I hit sell right now, it's not gonna sell me a low order like that right off the bat. It's gonna go ahead and sell my Bitcoin to people that are looking to buy around this price first until it slowly makes its way down to that price. And then if it dips below your limit price on the sell side, it won't, it'll stop your order. You won't be selling any Bitcoin for any lower than your limit price that you put in. Again, a little bit confusing. Make sure to ask questions in the comments if, if this doesn't make sense. Um, but the last type of order on Coinbase Pro is going to be your stop limit order. Now, this is sort of a safety net, the stop limit order. And this is something that can trigger automatically for you while you're away on vacation or you're asleep or something. So let's say you bought some Bitcoin. Um, you have a big position of Bitcoin and you want to make sure to sell overnight if it starts crashing, right? So right now it's at 37,800. And let's say you want to sell if it drops below, if it drops below 35,000, you want to cash out. You want to limit your losses, cut your losses and get out. So obviously if you were sleeping and Bitcoin just crashed past 35,000, you wake up in the morning and you're way down, that kind of sucks. So stop limit is a way to limit your losses. So a stop price is going to be the price at which your limit order is triggered. Okay. So overnight, if I, if I wanted to sell when Bitcoin drops below 35,000, I would set that as my stop price. So as soon as Bitcoin hits 35,000, it's going to trigger a limit order for me. And so what I could do is I could say, okay, as soon as it hits 35,000, I wanna sell my max, I wanna sell all my Bitcoin. And what you're gonna have to do is put in your limit order. And this same concepts from the limit order earlier apply. So if I put my, one of the common mistakes people do with stop limits is like this. If you set your stop and your limit order at the same price, chances are your order is not gonna go through because let's say over the night, Bitcoin hits 35,000 and just busts right through it all the way down to 34,000. If you put your limit at 35,000 and you're saying that, be, that means you're saying 35,000 is the least I'm willing to sell my Bitcoin for, and it just blows right past it, your order is not going to fill because you set your limit at 35,000. So what you'd want to do is something like this, say once it hits 35,000, I want my limit to trigger at around maybe 34,600. Because again, you want to give yourself a little bit of room, but limit orders are set up to give you the best order on the market. So if you hit place, uh, sell order on that and Bitcoin hit 35,000 overnight, it would automatically sell a limit order for you of your max amount of Bitcoin at the price you set your limit at. So sort of a safety net. You could also do it on the way up. Same thing. You could say, what if Bitcoin was taking off overnight? What if it hit 40,000 overnight? Then I want to make sure I can get in on that wave. Um, again, these are just examples. I want to buy max amount possible and I'm going to set my limit again. Give yourself a little bit of room, 40,300 and you could hit place. And so overnight, once the price hit 40,000, it would automatically place a buy order for you at 40,300. So those are your three basic types of orders that they have here on Coinbase Pro. Again, guys, it's a pretty simple layout on Coinbase Pro. Unfortunately, you can't do any charting on here um, like you can on some exchanges. But one thing you can do is you can go to tradingview.com and you can pull up um, any cryptocurrency charts uh, on any exchanges. So I could go uh, Bitcoin versus US dollar and I can look for Coinbase right here. So this will pull up the chart for Bitcoin on Coinbase. And now you could actually chart and use your lines. You can use your support and resistance and that sort of thing, which is stuff we'll go over in future videos. So if you do like drawing on your charts, you can always have TradingView opened up next to your Coinbase Pro. Um, but again, super simple, guys, how to use Coinbase Pro, how to use Coinbase Pro. Again, this is your main page where you'll do all of your trading. Then you've got your open orders page as well as your portfolios page. And then you've got account settings and that sort of thing in here. And very, very simple. 
And then again, if you did want to cash out some of this crypto into your bank account, you would have to transfer it back to the regular Coinbase, transfer it into US dollars, and then to your bank account. So if you wanted to do that, you would just hit withdraw. You would choose the coin you want to withdraw. If I wanted to take Dogecoin and I want to send it to Coinbase, I can click coinbase.com and instantly transfer it over there. So again, super simple, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you had any questions at all about how to use Coinbase Pro, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Leave a like if you learned anything from the video. Subscribe so you can catch our future videos and we'll catch you next time.